Hello everyone and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I am your host, Stan Rutan, and this is a Blue Collar Wine Show where I help you spend your wine little dollars wisely. And a lot of times I have fun tasting wines that are really budget wines and see how they do. You know, that's always fun. And we are going to southern Italy this time to a region called Salento, which is in Puglia. Salento is an IGT designation, meaning it's basically a table wine. It's not a DOC or a DOCG. Um, one of the more famous DOCs in that region is Solice Salentino, which you've probably heard of. And they do mostly Negra Maro wines, or Malve with, blended with Malvasia Nera sometimes. So Negra Maro is a big one down there. And Salento, however, much different uh, in that they can use up to 50 different varietals. So they get to use a lot more than some of the DOC wines. So, you know, that's that's kind of a cool thing. A little bit like, uh, you know, the U.S., they can play around just a little bit. Although they still have rules, like if they want to call it a varietal wine, they have to have up to 85% of that variety in the wine to do that. But we are going to try three Salentos, and they are not expensive. Uh, Salento has a uh, limestone base in the peninsula. So, you know, limestone, we talked about this, a lot of wine guys get geeky about limestone uh, composition in the soil, it really affects the wine. It's a, the region is 100 miles south to north, it starts on the white beaches and goes up north about 100 miles. So it's a big region, uh, they produce a lot of wines, and we're going to look at three that are really not that expensive. So let's get started. This is, now, this is a quail winery from Italy. It's a, from Salento, Join the Wine Democrat. It has all this stuff on the label about using 100% recycled material for the label. Um, let's see, it says everyone is a citizen, the quality of wine is closely and fundamentally linked to the quality of life. And they have all these different things on there. It's kind of cool. I believe these probably guys are sustainable, all about all that, so forth and so on. But it's the Quail Wine Company. This is... This rolls in at nine bucks. It is Negro Marl, 30%, Primitivo, 30%, Merlot, 20%, and Syrah, 20%. So there you go. It's got the two basic ones, Negro Marl and Primitivo, but then they throw in Syrah and Merlot. Very interesting. This is a 2015. Now, I, I, you know, I was organizing my cellar. I started finding all these Salento wines and I said, you know what? I'm going to do an episode on Salento, the region of Salento. Just think southern Italy, you think Puglia, and you got it. Nailed. Uh, the wines of, of Salento are, uh, in this area are known to be very rustic red wines. Dry and rustic. Uh, not everybody is into that. I know, I understand that. Here's the label. I'm not going to read everything on it, it'll just take way too long, but we get on the oh, color first. So, uh, this is a really dark, um, yeah, I would call it sort of a crimson color, yeah, close to black, there you go, dark red, for sure. Alright, let's see what we get on those. Ooh, black olive right off the bat. This is fairly aromatic. Yeah, I get black olive, sort of a, a, a black plum. A little tobacco coming through. Probably the, the, the plum and cherry notes are there. A Negro Amaro. By the way, Negro Amaro means the black bitter. Let's see what we get on the palate. Okay. <laughs> so much for rustic and dry. This does not fall in that category. Now, I, you probably can't get a 15. I probably have this in my cellar for, you know, probably two, three years, maybe couple years, two, three years. So, you know, it's been around, but I'm really impressed. It's a 15, so, you know, five years old, maybe six years old by now. So, 
sweet tannins, sweet fruit. Um, it has a definitely a plum element to it. Cherries for sure. Plums and cherries. Very nicely balanced, really. A lot of uh, you New World wine lovers would love this. I mean, this is a bang for the buck at $9. I mean, I mean, you can get this. I think they're probably on the 17 18 right now. And I bet it's not too far off of this one based on what they write on the label. Obviously, they're trying to hit that area of, you know, uh, a lot of uh, the 80% category is what I'm trying to get at, what I'm always looking for. The tannins are soft, but they're, they're solid. They're soft, approachable, but you can tell they're there. That has good structure. Tobacco comes out on the finish quite a bit. I'm telling you right now, this is a really good wine for nine bucks. I mean, I I got to figure out where I got this. I have no idea where I got this. Hopefully, one of my vendors is watching this. Uh, Enotech Importers, Enotech. I'll look it up to show you the label. So this. Again, sorry. <laughs> so this is just a really nice, it has the fruit, it has that black olive element, it has the tobacco, it has that nice uh, plum and cherry notes coming through, good balance, good structure. Uh, it's certainly not a, a flabby wine or anything like that. It's not a fruit bomb, but it has fruit and the tannins are sweet. I mean, it's, I've had it for a couple years. It's not, it, it's... It stayed, I mean, I didn't taste it new. I don't know what it tasted like young, but it's sort of tasting good now. And if you can have a $9 wine that gets better after a couple of years, can you ask for more than that, really? No, I'm going to go straight up B on this. I think it's a B wine, uh, way better than average. Not top notch, but, you know, better than average. I like it. Let's move on. Now, this is a um, 2000, this is an older one that I had, I think. And I know where I got this one. 2013. Um, Feline Alborello Salento Rosso, and this is Negromaro, Negromaro, and Primitivo. So that's the blend. Boy, coming out of the bottle, I noticed that it was a little rusty in color. So it's a 13, it's almost eight years old, or is eight years old. And this, uh, okay, I'm getting all excited because this first one is yeah, really good. Uh, this rolls in at eight dollars. Very classic, nice label. Alborello, kind of rusty. I get a little brown on this, which happens as wine ages. It, it definitely gets a brown hue to it. This has a little bit of brown coming through on the edges. It's dark in the center with brown edges. So it's a dark red. Yeah, you won't be able to see that on the screen, but the edges are kind of dark, like almost like a root beer color. I mean, lighter brown. Let's see what we get on the nose. It's always kind of fun to dig out things out of your cellar and uh, see what you have. I can smell on the nose a little bit of an age. I'm getting little earth notes on this one. If there was fruit on the nose, it's now disappeared and it's going into more savory uh, uh, aromatics. I'm getting, uh, oh, what's that? For There's a slight note of dark cherry. There's a perfumed element I can't quite put my hand on, or my nose on for that matter. Leather, cherry, earth. Yeah, that's what I'm getting, so let's see what we get on the palate. Holding up nicely, a little thin, not much fruit as the other one, but I like it. Good acidity. It actually has the, the earth notes come through big time. The cherry notes are there. Leather, good balance. I was a little afraid to put that one in my mouth because I wasn't sure based on the nose. Tannins have a little grip to them. Definitely cherry notes. Big time, and just a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a, 
blackberry coming through as well. Actually kind of excited about this wine. Now this is more classic Italian wine. This has good acidity. This is a great spaghetti wine. If you're doing anything with a red sauce, this would be great. So this is classic Italian wine. And it's a 13. I think that's awesome. Did I say it was eight dollars? Eight bucks, guys. So here's a Salice or a Primitivo slash slash um, Negro Maro that is now eight years old that is holding up nicely. That's pretty cool. Really cool, if you ask me. You can taste a little bit of that kind of Amarone-ish uh, dried prune thing coming through on the mid-palate into the finish. And because of the age, you're going to get a little bit of that prune. Now, most wine writers don't use the term prune. That kind of got thrown out the window. They use currants, dried currants, but it's got a prune element coming through as well. But the, the acidity really balances it out and makes it a great food wine. I'm liking this wine. I'm going to go... B minus. I'm gonna go B minus. I think for a, a eight dollar wine, this is stellar. And if you're watching Mr. Murphy and you have more of this in your stock and you have a newer vintage, send it my way because I want to try it. I definitely want to try this wine in the newer vintage. Kind of compare it. I'm stoked. I mean, to get that's kind of a wine, eight dollar wine. Pretty impressive with the acidity and the fruit and the earthiness and the black olive. I'm getting black olive on this one as well. Yeah, B minus, $8. Pretty cool. Now, I, I don't know if I've reviewed this one before, but this is the Pietri, Pietraluna from Torre Guasetto Salento Negra Amaro. So this is, well, it could be 100% Negra Amaro. They don't quite tell you, but it does say Negra Amaro on the label. This rolls in at $11. And this is a 17. So we're getting closer to our time. So I'm very curious about this one as well. I always like Negro Amaro. It's a really cool grape. Makes some great wines. Salice Salentino. Some of those DOC wines are, are awesome. Southern Italy, just in, in general. i got to get there one of these days. How many of you have been to Southern Italy? Let me know. Uh, I have been to Northern Italy. I've been to Rome, but I've never been to Southern Italy. It's a place my wife and I want to go together. She's been there, I have not. Okay, color on this one is quite dark. Dark, dark, dark red. Leaning towards black. Darker than the other two, by far. And younger, of course. It's nice and bright. Let's see what we get on those. Almost like a barbecue spice thing going on. Black olive, barbecue spices, dark, dark cherries. I mean, dark cherries, like really ripe, dark cherries. And a little bit of boysenberry action coming through here. You, you, blackberry, boysenberry, boysenberries are fatter, they're, they're richer, you know what I mean? That's what I'm getting. And there's some tobacco notes on there as well. Let's see what we get on the palate. Ding, 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 three in a row. This is awesome. The boysenberry really comes out big time on the palate. Now you had a, a, a fruit, you know, more fruit. This one has quite a bit of fruit. Dark cherry, but the boysenberry really comes out on the palate. Tobacco underneath. Smooth tannins, but good acidity. So the acidity is just lying underneath. It's on my tongue. I can feel it. I'm really jazzed about all three of these wines. $11 is the most expensive, guys. That's crazy. The barbecue spice hits on the mid palate big time. Tannins have a little grip on the finish, but this has great balance, good acidity, good fruit, with that tobacco and just a touch of leather.
This is mouth-watering. So this is, so we have a wine here you could drink all by itself. If you want to just pour a glass of wine and enjoy it. This one you can enjoy by itself as well, but it has a nice acidity that makes it, a, a, you know, a good match with food. You could have this with blue cheese hamburgers, pizza, spaghetti. You know what I'm talking about? That sort of food. That would be awesome. This one, a little earthier, definitely would be a spaghetti wine. But, you know, it's got some age on it as well. So to pull out of your cellar, you know, a couple older wines, and then this one a little bit younger. Not that much younger, though. It's still got four years on it. And they're all drinking good. That's impressive, and I'm excited. Yeah, I'm going to... Oh, the boysenberry just really pops on this. A little bit of cherry. But on the finish, that boysenberry is just lingering and hanging on. Great one. And then the tobacco kind of joins it. Not a heavy hit of tobacco, just a little bit. Great wine. Yeah, I'm going to go B+. Plus on that one. So we have a B, B minus, B plus wine, and they're all under $12. That's, that's, that's craziness. That's craziness. But that's what can happen with places like Salento. You can find some really good values down there. Spain, a great place for values. And it you can afford to put a few away. Remember the episode a few back? I talked about celery and wines. Well, these would be fun to just buy a couple and put them away for, you know, three to four years. See what happens. It's exciting when you pull things out of your cellar. Oh, look at that. I only spent 11 bucks on it, and it's really doing that. Or $8 or $9. It's crazy. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks for taking a little time out of your day. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. I'm getting a lot of subscribers. I thank you uh, for those who have recently subscribed. It means a lot to me. It just makes me feel good that I'm actually putting out content that people like. I love it. You keep watching, and I'll keep helping you spend your $1 wisely.